Hey guys, not sure if you heard over the last couple of weeks about this university in Michigan who has decided to equip their professors, their teachers, with hockey pucks to defend themselves and their students in the event of a mass killing. They've equipped, I think, with 800 hockey pucks so far, uh, professors, and another 1,500 or so are supposed to be distributed to the student body at some point as well. Um, I guess if there's a mass killer on campus, there's going to be a flurry of hockey pucks flying through the air in case somebody feels threatened. But nevertheless, the thing that perplexed me more than anything is the very fact that the police chief of the university is the one who came up with the idea. This is a person who has access to firearms that still felt like it was a better idea to equip people with a hockey puck. And let me tell you why. His reasoning behind that is because he was hit in the head with a hockey puck while training some kids in hockey as, a, as an assistant hockey coach some years ago. And he claims that it did some pretty remarkable damage to him. Maybe my assumptions that the damage that a hockey puck can do are underrated because clearly this man has experienced it firsthand. Um, I, I, look, I'm just gonna get into my demonstration here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a hockey puck. Finding a hockey puck in Southwest Louisiana is about like trying to find a good bowl of gumbo anywhere outside of the state of Louisiana. It was hard. I ordered a dozen of these things. I've never held a hockey puck or smelled a hockey puck, smells like rubber. Uh, in my life. So the cool thing was we felt like we wanted to have a demonstration. What I've done here is I've set up, uh, I have a bunch of steel targets here and I have a rubber torso over here. This is to simulate my classroom. The reason why the targets are down low is because I'm simulating people sitting in chairs in a classroom for kids. Now I'm doing this based on classrooms across the board, whether they be children or on up into college for adults. That's my perpetrator back there. I feel like if, there, if, there, if there's a door on the back side of the room and he's trying to come in, he may very well use children as cover. So I've got my, my children, so to speak, here and another row of them back there. I've got a total of 20, close to a classroom size, right? And again, my perpetrator back there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show the effectiveness of a hockey puck and I'm gonna show the effectiveness of a handgun. Now, I'm not the great, greatest shooter in the world, so, um, there's a chance that I'm not going to be that efficient. I hope I don't hit any of the kids, but there's a chance I may not be super efficient. I'm definitely not efficient with a hockey puck, so I'm going to practice a little bit before I get into my demonstration. Now, the cool thing was, to be fair, I felt like, all right, the average professor or teacher is not going to want to walk around with a hockey puck in their pocket. So what I did is I reached out to Savoie Leather. They were kind enough to take the dimensions of a hockey puck and build me a custom holster so that I could again out of fairness show a light comparison because clearly I would be slowed down trying to retrieve a hockey puck out of my pocket and you know what professor's not gonna be walking around with one in their hand so out of fairness I figure all right I'm gonna have a gun in a holster so let me show the puck in a holster big big thanks to Savoie Leather that's their logo there they were even kind enough to make it pink for me and they put a snowflake on the holster itself nice touch nice touch so that's gonna level the playing field, so to speak. So let's get right into it. Retrieving the hockey puck is a bit of a challenge because like any holster, it needs to be worn in. And uh, the holster actually holds it looser uh, or as loose as I would like it to be. Any tighter, there would no, be no way I could pull that out. So it'd be useless to have a hockey puck. <laughs> what am I saying here? <laughs> let's say I'm, I have my back to my classroom. I'm writing on a chalkboard, so I hear something, somebody's coming in my room, they either have a machete, a gun, a hockey puck, a bigger hockey puck than mine, and they're looking to do a mass pucking. Um, my goal here is gonna be not to hit any of my students, right? But to take the perpetrator out. So let's go, all right, I'm writing on the chalkboard, bah, 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 I hear something behind me, I draw my puck as I turn. All right, little Johnny will be going home after lunch with a headache. I had to figure out a way to explain to his mom that I just beamed him in the head with a hockey puck. Yeah, the perpetrator's still standing right there. So here we go again. I didn't think to get more holsters right around in here to carry more rounds because more rounds of pucks. So I only have one, so here we go. Oh, I almost nicked him. I think I almost nicked him. Let me get four of these guys right here. Oh, too high. Right past his head. Almost hit him. Got him. I got him. 
On the sixth shot, I got him. Wow, that's almost a kill shot because it's right, right near his heart. So uh, that's going to teach him a lesson, right? That is going to teach him a lesson. I've got my Glock. I've got 12 rounds in here because I had 12 rounds of ammo. In fact, I only threw uh, nine, excuse me, six rounds of my hockey pucks. So I'm only going to, I'm going to limit myself to six rounds here. Um, I would certainly like to thank CNG um, holsters for providing this holster for me. I love the fit and feel of it. Um, all right, here we go. Same thing. Writing on my chalkboard. One plus one. Now here's something behind me. Turn around. Hockey puck first. There were two things that I hit with my hockey puck. One was little Johnny. He's gonna be okay, but he's gonna have a raging headache. And again, I have to explain to his mom and dad how I beamed him in the head with a hockey puck. The second thing that I hit, in fact, here's the, uh, here's the puck round that I hit him with. The second thing that I hit, let me come over here where we can see it good, with the hockey puck was right here. This is where I hit the perpetrator. Got him! So that tells me that I hit him, I guess about at that angle right there. I had one shot with the Glock. There is a very good chance that the shot that I just gave him probably severed his spine. Very good chance of that. There's all kinds of spleen and liver and all kinds of stuff in there that most likely would have slowed this guy down, even if he were on some kind of substance that makes him feel like Superman. This would have pissed the guy off. Got him! This no doubt would have pissed him off too. But all of these kids, all of my kids, wouldn't be able to get out of my classroom safe and sound. All right, guys, I know we're being goofy out here today, but the point of this exercise is to show that playing with our own personal safety and the safety of our children and safety of our coworkers, that's not something that we should be experimenting with, with not even less than lethal means, but ridiculous means. This is proven technology right here. With the trained hand, this thing will stop this guy all day long. So guys, I just want to get the point across that we have proven means of defense out there already. And we need to utilize those. We need to stop fooling ourselves into thinking that we can save the world by putting hockey pucks in pink holsters and somehow or another that's going to that's gonna dissuade anybody from wanting to attack you, your family, your kids. We gotta be real about that. If I'm going in a classroom and I know you're armed with this, I'm not scared in the least. The most I can expect to leave there with is a bruise. If I know you're armed with this, I have a very good idea what I might be leaving there with today.